and so the time for you is it six a.m. What's the time for you? Uh, it's seven, 7? a.m. Uh, in the your uh, next morning. So it's I'm calling from your future. Okay. <laughs> this is why Ken has sold eight million books, and I've sold like <laughs> and then I've sold like eight. Uh, so this is an honor. This is very much an honor to have you here. It's a you're you're a worldwide well known author. <laughs> I'm so happy to share my thoughts, and um, thank you for sharing this great opportunity. What I know about your story, obviously, you're author of Happy Money, and it's an essay mm-hmm. you wrote many, many years ago. And it basically, I lost, I lost track of uh, how many books I wrote. Yeah, and, it, and it's created a a, a phenomenon. Uh, happy money, the Japanese art of making peace with your money, and I. It's such a. I think the reason it's done so well is that everyone on any income scale could can use that right it, it feels like we can all be better at coming to peace with something that is such a really a volatile emotional asset right so we're the retire sooner podcast part mm-hmm. of the focus here uh, is about people getting to a point where they're able to stop working um, but we also do a ton of research on our team and have written a lot about the habits of happy versus unhappy retirees. So Mm -hmm. you're covering, you're, you're intersecting at the very nexus of everything we care about here on retire sooner. So it's a really, it's, I think it's such a great fit. So I'm so excited to hear from you. And I think I would, I would first, well, I don't know if there, is there anything that you have to, you're all the way in Japan. You get to, you can ask me the first question if you want. And then, and then I've got about 40 for you. I, I'm all yours. And, uh, uh, and the fact that I retired at the age 29 for four years, uh, get me the understanding of what it's like to be retired. You know, um, I didn't wait till I, I hit, uh, hit 60 and uh, I wanted to experience uh, what's like to be retired when, um, when you were young. So I did that for four years, four full years of changing diapers, you know, do nothing. And that was re- really gr- good. And I'm 55, so five years into a retirement age. And I feel like, no way, I, I want to do so much more. <laughs> so I may retire a little later. That's my where I am now. Ken, I was, I'm reminded as we're talking now is that there, is there a word... In, I remember reading something about how in the Japanese language, there is no word for retirement because people in Japan, people don't necessarily believe in the thought of stopping working. Is that true or is that like a, is that an urban legend? Yeah, of course there is a, a word, you know, retirement is intai. But like um, many athletes, um, Japanese people, uh, ideal, ideal life is keep working. And then you're in hit your 60s and 70s, but you keep working. And then on that day, uh, you drop. You know, it's not like, uh, I think it's, uh, our work ethics is a little bit different. So Wait, say that people, again. So you're saying it is, an ide- it is an ideal picture for people to work and then stop and then die? Yeah, because um, uh, uh, that means that uh, if you can find um, so much love in your work, and then you don't mind doing that instead of just playing golf or just staying at home watching television. Um, uh, that's called ikigai. That means ikigai. that gives you a sense of purpose. So, um, uh, you know, retire early is not uh, really a respected thing. So no I wonder think- my books have been sold in Japan. <laughs> No one yeah, so in Japan I, listens to retire sooner. I, 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 but I don't think so because there's this uh, fire movement here too. Mm. A lot of young people are against the idea. I don't want to keep working till till you drop, right? So I I made s- at least a few hundred thousand people retire early when they're young because a lot of people look up to me and re- I retire. I look up to John Lennon, so I wanted to do the same. Um, and so I retire uh, for four years for a baby girl. So there was this, uh, this movement to retire for just a little bit. We call it semi-retirement. And so um, even though you hit 60s or 70s, you may not want to work as, as hard, but still you want to do something that can contribute to somebody. So like, you know, this legend sushi master, uh, uh, Jiro, you know, he... He, I think he's still, uh, I think he, he hit his 90. And my mentor uh, 
Mr. Sakurai, he's 92, and he still writes. And he started、uh, his publica-、uh, public, uh, publication company, a publishing company, when he hit his, his 80. So he started his company when he was 82. And、uh, after 10 years, he's still up and running. Right. So you, you retired at this very, very young age, right? 29、mm-hmm. is ultra early and, and did it for a while. You were able to、mm-hmm. raise your daughter in the early years f- fully focused.、Mm-hmm. And then let's, let's say you saw the population running into an issue of working very hard and not being able、mm-hmm. to spend enough time with their family. And、right. I would say, from an American perspective, we, we think of your country and your culture as very hard working. Yeah. So, it doesn't, so it doesn't surprise me that, that this is an issue.、Uh, and, then, and then that led you to, and I, and I think part of this is, is you growing up with your father as a, as a CPA. He was a, a, an accountant. That's accountant, yes. And, and then coming up with this idea of happy versus unhappy money. So happy、mm-hmm. money and unhappy money. And I think I would, I'd maybe let's, if you could explain that, what that means to you to, to our Retire Sooner audience. Yeah, sure, sure. So,、uh, happy money. Happy money is money that makes you smile, and unhappy money makes you, ooh, you know, feel small or、um, contained. So,、um, that's a big difference. So,、uh, it's, it's not like when you retire, but how you retire is very important. Ken, does it apply to, is this really about how you feel about money at every stage? It's not ju- this is not just about when you're stopping work and you've got this pool of money that you need to last. Is this a,、mm-hmm. Does this impact somebody who's 35 and they're paying a mortgage or they're buying a car?、Mm-hmm. Is it every little stage, even the consumer stage? Yeah. So、uh, I've written、uh, six books on generations. My, one of my national bestsellers is 17 Things to Do in Your 20s and 30s and 40s. I sold about 2.3 million copies here. And, and during the interviews with many people in their 20s and 30s and 40s, I realized that money means something different depending on、um, which generations. So, that, this kind of thing fascinates me. So,、uh, you know, money in your 20s, money in your 60s, the same thing, but completely different meaning. So, give, um, maybe give us a sense of that. So, to, what are those two extremes? Somebody in their, in their 20s、mm-hmm. relative to 60s, what does that look、right. like? So, for example, in your 20s, if you can remember, you know, money is for clothes, impressing you know,、uh, potential mate. So,、uh, you, you're like a peacock, you, know, you have to dress <laughs> well to impress other potential mates. So,、um, a more、um, money is, is going to be spent on parties, having fun. And you know, those things, and or like, to try to make you look good or smarter if you cannot look good, you know, <laughs> whatever that is, your strategy, uh, uh, and also,、um, you know, doing many stupid things and lose money、uh, in your 20s, start your own business, or just invest in、uh, girls and boys, and <laughs> in your 60s,、uh, after doing all, all sorts of things. Uh, you are, you're going to sort of like an enlightenment stage, you know.、Mm. Um, you, you walk through this depression and hope. So,、uh, you're like a master, you know.、Um, you go beyond money. So, you have fun, something that is meaningful for you. It could be playing golf, it could be,、uh, doing some sculpture.、Um, but you find something and you finally, Uh, come in terms with、um, who you are. So, money becomes a security, but not much to impress、um, other people. So,、um, uh, money is a tool. So, people use,、um, use it in a different way, depending on, on your generations. If I'm sitting there with a bank account and, and a listener is thinking, okay, I've got $50,000 or $500 or $5 million, let's, it doesn't, maybe, maybe the amount doesn't matter, Ken.、Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it is more about how they think about that money. And、mm-hmm. this is where you come in. Is there, is there a wand to wave, or what is, the, what is the behavior? What do we do to have our money kind of go from unhappy to happy, or, 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 or what is a mistake to make it go from happy to unhappy? <laughs> so, if you、uh, put too much meaning on money,、uh, suddenly you feel attached to money. For example, if you、uh, attach yourself to money in, in、um, say, 
、uh, money as security, suddenly you feel I cannot lose this one.、Mm-hmm. So money is super important for your secu- sense of security. And if you think money is your self worth, which a lot of North American people think,、uh, you know, suddenly you feel so threatened by the fall of the stock market or potential lawsuits or、uh, something、uh, to decrease the amount of your asset. So,、uh, if you're attached、uh, to money in, in an emotional way,、uh, it's going to、uh, drive you crazy, no matter what that is. Especially if, you're, if your amount is too much, it can cause you all sorts of problems, and also your family too. If you have too little, that's a problem too. But、uh, I think problems are bigger for、um, people who have so, too much. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. And I, I want to, so because I feel like we could all, in, I feel like most people in North America could,、mm-hmm. could get closer to happier, happy money than they are today.、Mm-hmm. Because we, we do tend to have this great sense of security with it. We have、mm-hmm. this, and some people have a great sense of meaning or an、mm-hmm. earning, and it defines them. And it would be helpful to try to, Talk us through minimizing all of that. But I think I wanted to start with the, the, the struggle of people that have too much money or plenty of money.、Mm-hmm. And what are the、uh, unique problems there? Yeah. So, you know,、uh, before going into that, money creates a lot of、uh, emotional stress. So, there's this study um, done um, by the number of complaints h a p p e n in、uh, airplane, um, inside an a- airplane. So,、uh, if there is a first class,、um, you know, they're, they're uh, uh, the same size、uh, aircraft, but the, the plane with a、uh, first class and the, the plane with all the same seats. So, you know what?、Um, which one has、uh, more ca- complaint cases? Of course, the one with the first classes. Because、yeah. if the meal service is slow,、uh, people in the back think, That the rich guy gets our, our food, you know, or maybe better for,、uh, food first. And then、uh, they're so slow. But if it's the same class, people don't complain. So it's not how much money you have or how much you, money you make. It's about the sense of fairness. So、uh, oh. I think people in North America struggle. Somebody else is just getting a better deal or get a better、uh, something. That makes you feel so、uh, unfair, frustrated. So,、uh, this feeling、uh, is the same if you're making $10,000 or $10 million. You know,、uh, and if you're making $10 million, I bet the chances that your friends are making、uh, twice as more. So, right, right. The, you know, a, 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 an acquaintance of mine said they feel so small when they drive into this special、uh, terminal. Uh, for his private jet.、Uh, he feels so small because all the other private jets are so big. His plane is so small. <laughs> so, so it, it doesn't go him- away. To your point, it doesn't matter, right? You could、yeah. be somebody that makes $10,000 a year or someone that makes $10 million. There's, there's always something that f- maybe feels unfair or can feel unfair mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. around finances. It doesn't matter, right? Right. So you have to find peace with. <laughs> Uh, with money in your own way. Otherwise,、um, uh, people think that making more money solves a problem. But if you're making already $500,000 a year,、uh, another $100,000 doesn't really do much.、Right. So、uh, you, you know the statistics like you, if we're making over $75,000 US dollars,、uh, that, that doesn't give you more. Um, happiness, even if you make more money. So, you have to find another way. You have to look inside to find happiness. That's why I teach Zen and also、um, try to find a sense of peace with money. Yeah, it is that. So, tell us maybe some of the steps and then how big of a journey is that? Or can you just totally get me to happy money state before we're done here on Zoom?、Uh-huh. That, because it would be so good that the feeling of just having the Zen money,、mm-hmm. which I, again, I know this, this is what you write about as well.、Mm-hmm. Is that how hard is that to do, Ken? Is how long does it take to get there? And what are some of the steps? <laughs> It's so easy and simple. My mentor, Wahei Takeda, who's called、uh, Warren Buffett of Japan,、um, he is one time a、uh, uh, major shareholder of more than 100 public companies here. 
But he said, he taught me、uh, the key to happiness around money is Arigato your money. It takes only one second. Appreciate your money,、uh, both coming in and going out. By appreciating money in your life, you can start the cycle of appreciation in your life. So, when money comes in、uh, as a dividend or check or whatever the form is, can you appreciate the money with your open heart? And then, wow, thank you, money, for coming into my life. And when you spend it in a matter of、uh, paying at the restaurant or shop or taxes and, and, and paying the bills, can you appreciate all the service given to you? Or all the, all the goods in exchange、uh, for your money. So, if you can start appreciating your money, it takes only one second and it doesn't cost you anything. It totally shifts your energy. And I've taught this technique to、uh, at least a few hundred thousand people personally. I talk to thousands of people all the time. And then this uh, in, uh, English interview, the total、uh, <clears throat> um, views have been at least. 20, 30 million、uh, views in English and Spanish、um, uh, speaking world. And I've, get, I've got、uh, thousands of、uh, emails saying, Thank you, Ken.、Uh, your Arigato Mani technique changed my whole, whole entire family because we used to complain about money. My kids used to complain about money. But once we start appreciating our money, we say thank you more in our family. So, the total thank you in my family must be 10 times more than it used to be. So, the, it, it is, I, so, adiato is how we pronounce that, right? Yes, adiato, yes. So, we, I can, we can appreciate money coming in. And then, what about, I, I can see how if I go get sushi tonight, <laughs> I'm going to easily appreciate Spending money on the sushi, and I'm going to thank my money for bu- buying、uh-huh. me the sushi, right? Is that okay?、Mm-hmm. But then, what if I get a ticket when I walk out to my car and I've got a, a $100 ticket for a parking ticket? Do、yeah. I need, do, how, how do I appreciate that? Or do I have to just dig, dig a little deeper and just say, well, I appreciate that we, we have police and we're actually having order in our lives? Yeah, because you know, that money will just go to、uh, not to the police per,、uh, person directly, but it's going to pay for the salary and for the safety of the town. And、uh, because of、uh, the, or say, speeding or parking, either way, if you keep、uh, speeding、um, that fast and if you just、um, park in the wrong spot,、uh, you could be a nuisance and p- potential danger to other people. Yeah. So they, pre- they kind of like, you know, knock on the door and say, Sir, did you forget it? Yes, sorry. You know, my goodness, I forgot that this is not the right spot. Thank you for reminding me, you know, for the safety of us and also other people. So to appreciate your kindness and generosity, I don't mind paying for this. So、yeah. if, and if you can go a step further, I appreciate you, officer. For just doing the right work.、Yeah. By the way, I one, one time I was pulled over in Japan、uh, for speeding, and not, oh、uh, no, no, it's a, a, a long term. And、uh, um, I, I got pulled over, and then, then we had a fine, you know,、uh, friendly conversation. And I thanked the officer, you know, thank you uh, um, for doing the great work. And I'm sorry I didn't miss this, I, I didn't look at the sign, I, mi- I must have missed it. And we had a very good、uh, connection. And he, the officer said, Good day, you're good to go. So I was supposed to pay like $50 or $100, but I was let go free. So this appreciation also works in that sense. I don't know if that works in North America, but <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it might be a little different here with the cops. <laughs> <laughs> Roll down your window, drive license and registration, please. <laughs>、uh-huh. Thank you so much, officer. I'm so glad you asked.、Um, the, so, all right. So, this adiato, which is a way of appreciating the money that comes, that goes out, and we can,、uh-huh. we can essentially identify a root benefit to almost anything or really anything that we spend our money on, right? Even if it's something that on the surface that is a p- penalty or、mm-hmm. something we don't want to have to be spending. But if we're doing so, it's usually for some service that's helping us in some way. 
Mm-hmm. Appreciating money coming in. Tell me a little bit of, about that. And does that, uh, well, tell, let's, let's start with that. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciating a paycheck. I'm appreciating a dividend. Mm-hmm. I'm appreciating any sort of return on, on my capital. And how mm-hmm. do you think about that when you receive something? Yeah. So if you're, say, working uh, for a company, uh, uh, your boss or colleagues uh, thought you are uh, worthy of uh, working in the company. So out of many thousands of potential employees, uh, you are chosen to work for the company. And if you're working as a freelance coach, uh, you were chosen by a client out of 10,000 other coaches in your own area. So can you appreciate the person or uh, the boss or whoever hired you for uh, choosing you and for trusting you uh, for with their uh, very important money. So can you feel the trust and also can you feel that you're chosen as uh, to to work with? Can you appreciate you know uh, um, that person? Um, and I did a uh, uh, um, fun experiment one time many years ago. I when I was doing consulting, I divided my clients into two groups. One. I did nothing. The other group, I I brought something small like a book or um, herb tea or chocolate, <clears throat> something to say thank you for the business. And amazingly, six months later, the first group, I got some referrals, but it's okay. But the second group that I brought some small gifts, not huge, they were just <clears throat> sending me so many clients. Uh, so my appreciation uh, uh, return as a referral, uh, as a referral. So thank you to uh, the people who pay you. Always uh, works. So um, this thing is not just a spiritual practice. It's it's just about marketing too. How about our? If I if I think about our ambition mm-hmm. in again North America in the United States, how can, how do we feel about that? Is it Right? Is there a right way? Uh, is it wrong uh, to uh, continue to want more when it comes to uh, I'm making fifty thousand, but I want to make a hundred. I make a hundred. I want to make two hundred. And yes, I, I'm a big believer in uh, the. I, I've done my own studies on money and happiness, and I've found that there's a plateau. I call it a diminishing marginal happiness per new dollar. It's mm-hmm. the plateauing effect of we had a lot of new happiness early on because we get maybe some just peace of mind that we can live Mm -hmm. in society. And then after a certain point, it levels off, it plateaus. Is it right? Is it wrong for somebody to think, hey, I'm making 100, I want to make 500 one day. Is there anything wrong with that? Is that becoming, or, or is that okay if you're giving appreciation to it? And, and I want to understand that. I think the most important thing is how you feel about it. <clears throat> a lot of us are driven because of a greed, because of us wanting more. So wanting more doesn't make you happy. Uh, and, you know, naturally growing is, is good and healthy. But if you want more and more and more uh, work out of greed and also anxiety, that creates more greed and anxiety. So I think the motivation behind wanting more is very important because in life, you know, there are two ways of finding peace and happiness. If you um, um, look for it, what you want and go for it, that's also exciting life. Uh, the other way is uh, look inside. If you if you enjoy what you have already got, um, that brings happiness too. So there are two sides of happiness, wanting more and just going after what you want. And at the same time, uh, really, truly enjoying what you what you got. Uh, a lot of people who want to have more forget they have already enough, and then want more. If that is a case, uh, there's a never-ending hell, uh, like uh, um, you're drinking seawater in a drifting boat. You know, drinking seawater makes you feel thirsty more, and then you drink more. So. Um, you, you're going to end up dying uh, on a boat. So don't drink uh, seawater, salted water on a drifting boat because it's like making money is exactly like that. I've been on the road, so I know what it's like. So 
uh, more stress comes in if you just make more than two hundred thousand dollars. There could be a potential lawsuits. Your kids may be the target of <clears throat> uh, kidnapping. So I guess um, you need to find your right container, right money container size. Uh, some people are born with a bigger container than others, and some people are born with small containers. So if you try to push money into your container, it's going to crack. So Ooh. you have to know the right size. And, well, how uh, do we know that? Now, and this goes back to you, you, you were saying that making 200000 or $2 million, you're going to end up with a whole new set of problems. Mm-hmm. How are we supposed to know that money container size? It's very easy. Just think of the uh, bills you pay. You know, uh, uh, for some people, bill, uh, uh, they don't mind paying, uh, uh, say, $10,000 bills, right? A mortgage and everything. Uh, and, and that means that their um, money container is, is bigger than $10,000. Mm-hmm. So if you're uh, working, currently working, say, $150,000 $50, income or budget, uh, you're probably paying about uh, ten thousand dollars every month, right? Right. Yeah, and uh, I think about your credit card bills is more than like fifty thousand dollars every month. Do you feel like you know I have to pay fifty thousand dollars every month? And you know, and then uh, your money container is probably a little smaller than that. <laughs> and yeah. uh, my friend who's make uh, you know who has a uh, one hundred million uh, uh, dollars in sales. His bills is about, uh, you know, $10 million every month. So a uh, $10 million bill every month equals $300,000 uh, bill cost every day. So can you feel like paying th- uh, $300,000 every day? And you feel like, <laughs> no way. You know? <laughs> and then your container size is not that big. Okay, so so we can, we can figure out our container size. Uh, what about people that that struggle with unhappy money? Is, is it really come down to, or or was there a time in your life, Ken, that, that you did, did not have this appreciation? Did you ever have unhappy money at any given time? Yes. Uh, you know, I used to work with uh, my father, who was a tax accountant. And my brother was also a tax accountant. And that gave, uh, gave me this uh, sort of like a family obligation you know, if your father is a doctor or a lawyer, that you have your old police pr- person, you're supposed to do the same kind of thing, right? Yeah. And then that would make your dad proud. So that time, uh, I was not super happy, and because um, f- um, my uh, my true calling and true passion is to inspire people, uh, millions of people. So. I was not satisfied with a uh, hundred or two hundred clients. Uh, I was all doing okay, but the money I was uh, making is not that big either. So I felt something is missing. Uh, it's not. I'm not against uh, you know accounting work or anything, but it wasn't the right fit for for me. So unless you find the right fit for you, uh, doing uh, what you love so much, so you feel like. You're not working. Um, so that is your true passion and, and life calling. And that is happy money. That's your Aikigi. What well, was that? Is that different though than Aikigi? Ikigai? Yeah, it's, ikigai? it's pretty much the same. So uh, Ikigai brings you happy money. Uh, you know, uh, if you're a doctor or a lawyer or, um, flo- you know, work, if you're working in, uh, uh, as a florist, it's the same thing. Do what you love. That brings happy money into your life. I, I, let's talk about abundance for a minute. How do mm-hmm. we how do we bring a sense of, uh, or what is the effect of abundance uh, relative to this feeling of scarcity? And I think that you've you maybe call scarcity a myth. Maybe we mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. we start with scarcity. Well, scarcity is uh, a place where you feel like you don't have enough for your survival or for your satisfaction. And on the other hand, abundance, abundant mentality is uh, always if you always feel I have more than enough, you know, uh, even if it's ten dollars, this is more than enough. So uh, this feeling that I have so much it gives you uh, uh, deep satisfaction in your life. So 
Even if you have $10 million in your bank account, if you're feeling this is not enough, you know, it makes you feel miserable. So it's, it's how you look at life. And uh, if you always feel like you have more than enough, or if, if you don't have enough, someone else will, uh, will come in and help you. And then you don't have to worry about life. So the reason why I don't have money anxiety is that I know my friends will make sure that I will not fall. They are going to come in and help. So even if I just lose everything, for example, I think I'll be okay because my friends will come in and help me financially and emotionally. So if you have that safety net, you don't have to rely on your personal bank account. Uh, and then uh, even if you have so much money in your bank account, what if uh, you know the government shuts down your bank account? Or what if, what if, what if you feel anxiety? Because anxiety uh, creates an illusion that one day your life will be really bad. So, right. um, so you have to really uh, find peace inside, and uh, the the key is your connection with people. Uh, I'm talking. Uh, I'm teaching a lot about invisible assets. You know how to create invisible assets instead of visible assets. Visible assets meaning stocks and bond and real estate. Uh, invisible assets is the trust, friendship, uh, generosity, and kindness. And those things are not highly appreciated right now, but I think it's going to be um, valuable in in a few years when uh, we're going to a heavy recession. And friendship and the generosity is all we can count, not in your bank account. And I think we're going to realize what's most important in our life. Uh, so instead of increasing the amount of uh, your net asset, uh, people focus on how much we have uh, in terms of uh, friendship, you know, the love in the family and the care in the community and the generosity and sharing. So I, I'm welcoming the coming recession uh, with open arms because we're going to um, experience hardships together. But if we can get through this by sharing what we have, and caring about each other. I think um, we are going to learn something big instead of just all of us making a lot of money. The thought around socialization, I, I, I've read about uh, in, the, in, the, in the Blue Zones books by Dan Butner a little bit about the, the groups called, is it Mo? How do you pronounce it? Moai or Moa groups where, where mm -hmm. is it if women get, band together kind of for a lifetime? What is that? Is that a Japanese word? I don't know. <laughs> But okay. I, I understand what you mean. But I think if you're just bound, you know, um, if you have a strong bound uh, bonding, that is such a big uh, foundation for the rest of your life. So I strongly uh, suggest that you you start creating your own uh, um, safety net, you know. Uh, but uh, talking about money brings so much emotions in North America. A lot of shame, a lot of guilt. So I hope uh, if you can talk about it with your own family members, that it's going to help you a lot more. You know, uh, I'm I'm fascinated with uh, anthropology, and I have traveled all around the world, and especially uh, Europeans and North Americans are individualistic. So um, it's hard to talk about money, uh, uh, like uh, in China and in Japan. Um, we are talking about money more casually, you know, it's still taboo, but when you go to a high school reunion or college reunion, we ask each other, how much money are you making? You know, so. You but do in, in, America, in Japan and China, they do that. You yeah. guys do that. Okay. Yeah. But in America, Wes, if you just come in, Hey Wes, how are you doing? You're, I know you're working in a good company. How much are you making a year last year? You know, <laughs> and then. You know, you would be like, that. what? What did you say? Right. <laughs> so, um, so it's, it's almost like saying, how's your wife? How's your kid? You know, kid. And, and, uh, um, uh, like when I attended, uh, uh, my reunion a few years ago, um, people know I bought a retreat center, you know, which can seat 60 people. Yeah. And then, uh, I said, you know, you can come in anytime. And, <laughs> and my friend said, how much was it? <laughs> <laughs> and then you would ask something like that in North America, right? When you bought a house. No, like yeah. How much was it? And do you ever feel any guilt 
uh, around? Do people in your in your culture feel guilt or shame in, in the number ever? Oh uh, yeah, we 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 feel different one. You know, we feel competitive. You know, if your friends are making mo- way more, but at the same time, like wow, great for you guys. You know, so and I'm sure in North America, uh, there is a feeling if you're very close. But I I have a sense that uh, people feel funny about talking. Um, it, it is funny you, for very very close friends. You're right. We in North America, we we do. Now I am in the investment business. Uh, uh-huh. for, so I, it is normal to sit down with a couple and, and it's the first thing we talk about. Oh, well, so how much are you making at IBM and how much are you making at at and And they say 150,000 uh-huh. or 200,000. And that's, that's normal, but, but not socially. You would never do that yeah. socially here. Right. Like very close friends will at some point say, Hey, how much are you making over there? But, yeah. but there's also sometimes a little bit of so I, I'm, we're, you're sitting here telling me that your culture, this is no big deal. And I'm still like, I want to ask Ken how much money he makes, but I'm still not going to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's like a social courtesy. But on the other hand, uh, in Asia, sexual issues are more taboo. Uh-huh. So in North America, it, it seems like there are people um, talking about it openly. Sex is open and, uh, sex is open and no, not taboo, but money is. And in your yeah. culture, it's flip-flopped. Yes, so you can shock a Japanese businessman by asking about his sexual life, and then he's <laughs> gonna he's gonna have a heart attack. So you know we have social taboos in a different area. So I hope uh, Japanese people will be free from sexual uh, taboos, and also North American people will be free from uh, money taboos uh, emotionally, and then we can relax more. So do you, so in this year and you, you're 55, are you, has your income just keep going or, well, let me ask you, how much have you made this year or how much about will you make this year? Yeah. So I think I'm going to, uh, uh, from book royalties, I have been work, uh, making about half a million dollars, uh, uh every year, pretty yeah. much for, for and a long I have, time. Yeah. yeah. And I have other incomes from passive income and, uh, uh, other sorts of in- income. I have a retreat center. Uh, which leasing out, and also I have uh, seminar business, and I have uh, other um, speaking engagements, and uh, uh, four or five different businesses. So I don't know exactly how much I'm making, but uh, I'm I make more than enough for a family of three. Yeah. So I support uh, many families with my income too. I started a, a, like sort of like a personal basic income. To support people who are um, um, who are, have a hard time making both ends meet, so instead of government doing it, I'm just doing it. And these are people within your your community and network, or just your family, uh, extended no, family. Uh, with a, within my community, but they're not uh, um, blood related. But I, I think of them as my family, and then I'm thinking of extending that to uh, more distant family because. Uh, people are going to need more and more support. So I'm so um, proud of myself being able to support bigger family, you know, uh, because I, um, I receive more money than um, that I need for a family of three. And uh, I cannot eat fancy meals 10 times a day. Mm-hmm. So you might as well, yeah, support others. Wow, it's funny. It makes me want to be supporting. I feel like I, I should be supporting more people. I and I have to, I do have a family of six, so that's uh-huh. that is a start. I mean, I've got. <laughs> <laughs> there are what about families fighting over money and uh, let's say fighting over um, whether it's <clears throat> property or land. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what happens and who? What happens in in that situation? And how do we solve it's that? A- it's about sense of uh, fairness once again. Mm-hmm. You know, I w- was in, at the conference table one time that the brother uh, was uh, had a, a private uh, uh, university education while his sister uh, didn't. And uh, the brother uh, went uh, abroad and uh, got um, a higher education. That means that uh, he gets higher pay. And, uh, and uh, his sister didn't uh, find a good job. So um, instead of working in a big com- company, uh, she was um, with uh, the family, the parents. And then um, she was sort of like the protector of the family. She cooked and t- she t- took them to the hospital. 
And and uh, the brother um, uh, said, you know, we're going to split in half. But she felt like um, her brother is making way more money. And then she doesn't. And she was there in the family uh, parents for over uh, 15 years, taking care of them. So uh, legally, they should split the money, sure, right? Sure, sure. But uh, emotionally, she feels like she deserves more. So if the brother, in that case, he understood. So sister, you know, you, you've done so much. So please take um, like 75% uh, uh, of what, what, what our parents left. And then I'm okay with 25%. So that was a happy ending. Mm. But uh, a lot of families, uh, they try to, you know, uh, since legally it's half and half, I take the half. Thank you, sister. And then, or oh, many, many cases, there's not even a thank you. That really upset the whole situation, right? Yeah. So it's about sense of being appreciated. Fairness and appreciation, of being yeah. Treated with respect. So unless you do have that uh, in your family members, it could create a lot of chaos. What about at work, Ken? Is there a sense? What What if you're feeling as though you're not, somebody's maybe making too much relative to you and you feel unfair and it's a work situation? Yes, exactly the same. This feeling that you're not treated fairly, you know, uh, and, and then you're upset. So, yeah. but overall, I believe in fair um, universe. So if I'm not uh, appreciated here, I'll be appreciated somewhere else. So I don't get upset. I feel like that this situation tells me I'm in the wrong spot. So uh -huh. I have to find another spot, you know. So but so I'm I'm okay emotionally. But a lot of people feel like it's not fair, right? And this should not ha be happening to me. So instead of getting upset over uh, what's not right, you should find a better place that you be treated with more respect and uh, uh, more love and generosity. So um, I, I believe in fairness, but in many organizations, it's so impossible to treat or give them a fair evaluation. You know, I'm, I have many friends who are in personal de uh, department personnel. It's almost impossible to judge some, some people, you know, that he or she is doing the right job because right. it, it it, it's so hard to calculate. So some sometimes people feel that they're not uh, are treated equally. But life uh, is not uh, treating everybody equally. But I, I believe in fairness. Life is treating you fairly if you just, you know, if you just take a close look. So uh, the, I, I always say this, uh, the distance to your, to happiness is... Um, the same for everyone. You know, some people think that uh, like uh, kids of rich family, they're closer to happiness. No, it's not. I have many friends who are parents are super wealthy and uh, they're always said, oh, you're a son of that, that, that. And then so uh, shame on you. I thought you're do doing a lot much more, but you're so pathetic, you know, and just uh, you're shame on you. I know your father. So, you know, they're being treated. Oh, it's most like an abuse. Mm -hmm. So even though you're born and brought up in a uh, um, wealthy family, the distance to happiness is exactly the same. So once you get this, uh, you can work inside um, because um, it's we've been treated equally in terms of um, in terms of happiness. So everybody can find his or her own happiness in its own unique way. Can I've got four younger kids still, uh, four boys uh, from 15 down to six. And mm -hmm. it, I think it's, I think it is a little bit of a struggle to teach them about money. I think it's hard mm -hmm. to, it's, it's hard for me. Um, and I, and I guess I would ask you, I know you have a, a, a special relationship with your daughter uh -huh. and how is that? How have you taught her about money? And what do you, what do you recommend to me as a, as a dad? Uh -huh. So, you know, um, f the best example is you live your life with the gratitude. You know, my daughter has has seen uh, how I worked. So one time I, I was talking to thousands of people, about 2,500 people. 
And uh, my daughter was about eight, eight or nine or something like that. And, um, and, and she was so surprised from the curtain, you know, uh, and in the backstage. Wow. It, all the people came to see you, dad. And I said, yeah. I was so proud. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, I asked her, why do you think there are so many people are here? And uh, I'm going to talk about money. And, and my daughter said, I think, you know, uh, they, they, they came in and say how much they love you. And I cried because I thought I was giving them, you know, but I, from her, her eyes, they're giving me and I got it so wrong. <laughs> so, uh, and I realized that there's, uh, this arrogance in me that I got famous. My book sold millions. I'm here to love you. But in fact, in fact, they came in, they bought the copies. That's why I got all the money. And so um, she taught me. But the, the way we, we kind of exchange. To love them. To love them. <laughs> yeah. To love them. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, I, was, I, was, I was thinking of teaching her about money, but she was teaching me about money. So, um, you know, money is love. So if you can somehow um, experience love is money, uh, so I was, I used, I always uh, used to say, uh, when we, uh, dine at a nice table, uh, or dine at, uh, at home, we always say, this food is brought to, you know, it's like a commercial. <laughs> this, this food is brought to us by thousands of reader, readers of my recent books. So I appreciate the people who came to the bookstore to buy my books and send money. And we kind of jokingly, Thank them, you know, in our own imagination. Thank all the readers. Because of you, we could eat, you know, this beautiful meal. So uh, they're in my prayer. So if you can include all the people with your kids' prayer saying that who gave you the money? And if you can appreciate them for sending us the money, uh, supporting our family, uh, I think it's a great education, and in 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 the future, they will they want to do something that um, that they can uh, support other people. Uh, by the way, my uh, my daughter is 24, and she became a singer. And uh, tomorrow, actually, she's going to do a a concert in the center of Tokyo, and uh, she's expressing her love uh, through music. Whoa! And so, she is this one of her? Is this her biggest concert yet? Or this sounds like a very big deal? Or is she already been very famous in in she, oh, Japan? She released, uh, um, she released this uh, CD this year, so it's gonna. Uh, her name is Stella. Stella. Uh, so, yeah, she's she's uh, gonna sing in uh, Japanese, English, and Chinese. So um, uh, fairly soon, you're gonna see it on YouTube. She's already um, her channel is about. Uh, a few hundred thousand views already. Already. So, already. Yeah. So it's exciting. So I told her well about uh, um, more you appreciate, the more it grows. So um, I I think that's super important. Even if you become a doctor, lawyers, uh, you know, teachers, or doing whatever. Um, for for work, it really is a it it it's a very fundamental. Uh, principle that what you're talking about it's very fundamental right mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's there's nothing to do with dollars and cents so much it's a mm -hmm. but it's everything to do about if you're uh if you're sitting around and and you understand where the where where this came from and who who paid for it not dad mm -hmm. right or mom but those who have paid dad and mom for their services over the years and it's thankful to them Right. Is what you're talking about. And that's a very fundamental thing about money. And I think it I it sounds like that would then lead to the a fundamental appreciation of money, which gets you back to happy money, right? Appreciate in and appreciate out, appreciate in. And it's something where uh, I think it's hard for uh, I think it's hard for anybody and in particular little kids to to connect all those dots. Mm -hmm. It's like, dad, what do you do? What do people pay? How much do people pay? What do you get paid for? What? And, and I think there are a lot of careers like that, Ken, where it's hard to even understand what mom and dad are doing. You're a consultant. What are you consulting on? <laughs> if you can explain what you do and how much you make, 
one time she was uh, seven or eight at the time, and uh, we're uh, in a long, long line for ice cream. And um, uh, I was telling her that my book sales are paying the ice cream. And, and, and she asked me, she was curious about money, I think. So she, maybe she's older than that. And she asked me, how much money are you making per book sale? Yeah. And uh, I said, I make 50 cents per book. You know, and, and then she was saying, can I still eat my ice cream? Because it's like $4. <laughs> and then I was laughing because like, oh my God, my dad is only making 40, 50 cents, you know? Right. You need to sell five books to have this, this ice cream. It's a yeah, lot of books. Yeah. It's yeah. A lot of so she was like, can I, I eat my ice cream? And I was <laughs> laughing, but you know, like she, she understands. So uh, if you can uh, teach your kids how you make money and so, and, and then, uh, how many people you're am- impacting through your work and how uh, she's seeing so many um, people. Uh, I, I bought this retreat center outside of Tokyo so I don't have to stay away from my family. So there is a big, like a hotel. Hotel. Wait, wait, tell me about the retreat center. What is it? What is the re- what's the retreat center? What is it? Oh, so uh, my retreat center is like a hotel and uh, there is a, um, a seminar hall and also a dining hall downstairs so we can seat 60 people and in that big building uh we we built um a private area so uh we can you know we can live uh and so uh my commute is uh only 10 10 seconds you know after the seminar seven o'clock thank you thank thank you guys see you tomorrow it's a retreat center so people stay overnight and and so after 10 seconds i come in to my uh personal area and then uh, we can dine so I, I've, I've shown her how I work. So, um, you know, she comes in, comes down and just talk with participants and, uh, and the people tell uh, her how much they love me and all, all that all kind of thing. So she understood from the very early age that I'm making people happy and smile. So that's what, that's what I do. What are your, your retreats called? What, what are the seminars called? And they're like, what, one or two days? Oh, so sometimes I deal with relationships, sometimes uh, 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 financial independence. So I pick a theme uh, out from the hat, and then I'll, uh, like next year, next week, uh, I'm going to talk about more spiritual side of money. So I have more spiritual um, audience. And uh, the last week, uh, uh, last month, I did uh, uh, retreat for uh, writers. You know how to become. Uh, a best-selling writer. So um, I teach people very more technique, you know, uh, how to write five chapters, how to sell 100,000 books and uh, marketing and how to work with, uh, you know, editors and all that kind of thing. So the, so you have different seminars through through your website. People, you'll say, I'm going to do these five, you know, this, these are the topics over the course of the next couple of months. Yes, yes. And then people sign in fast and there's always a long queue for that. Um, I, do I get some preferential treatment if you, if I can, if I want to sign up for one of yours, if I come to Japan, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of doing a, a, a fun event in Kyoto for international guests, uh, sometime next year when cherry trees are beautiful because a lot of uh, my fans overseas, they want to come to Japan. So, okay, I'm going to plan something for you guys. So, and where, uh, what sometime, is the name of this place with all these beautiful cherry trees? Uh, Kyoto. Kyoto is oh, a place. Kyoto. Oh, Kyoto. Okay, Kyo- mm-hmm. Kyoto. Um, uh, old temples, shrines. Beautiful, um, yeah. Beautiful area. So, you know, we're going to do a seminar, probably Happy Money Seminar and uh, uh, fun um, school trip. So, How about uh, a poverty? Do, do we have, is there a way for people in poverty to also feel happy money? Mm-hmm. So the, the problem with poverty is uh, uh, depression. You know, people who mm. cannot see hope uh, in the future, they get depressed. So this is a vicious cycle. If you're depressed, you cannot feel motivated to do something, and then you get depressed. So unless you break this uh, pattern or break out this, this cycle, you cannot get out of poverty. So I think uh, depression is the, the first thing you have to choose. and uh, You have to choose to work with. Uh, otherwise, you cannot get out. And once you know, oh, this is easy, you know, I can get out of this. 
uh, this cycle uh, in a minute, and and then you can. But once again, appreciation is the the saver. You know, it, appreciation shifts you out of this poverty consciousness. And once you do, you see something so different, and it takes a some time to to feel that. And and then the spiritual, and I, you just said you teach a whole class on spiritual. Mm-hmm. If, what what would be what is the spiritual element of money? The spiritual element of money is so fascinating because uh, money is energy. And when you t- take a look at uh, um, money as an energy side, you see a lot of flow uh, in your life and also um, in, in, in anywhere. Um, uh, so uh, if you are just making some people happy, the happy energy comes into your life. And uh, sometimes um, people make too much money. That's not really th- theirs. Um, so say if you overcharge your client and then get the money, but uh, the money uh, contains unhappy money energy. Ooh. So that hit you. And then you, uh, it hit your family members it, it, because you know the stress that you didn't do things right. Mm. So you feel something isn't right. So you feel uh, guilty about guilty. that. So that kind of funny guilt uh, gets you upset, so you yell at your kids or your wife or husband, because you know uh, you are you 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 have bad energy in your system. So once you're contaminated, you cannot be happy. You cannot be uh, generous with other people. So you pe- uh, you treat people in not not in a good way. So um uh, so they will hate you for that. <laughs> so you cannot feel happy. How do you break it? So how do you break that cycle, the spiritual side of that? Yeah, so you have to um, have um, right eyes. This is my money. This is not my money. So you you can only accept happy money. Mm. So that's why I I have a 100% money guarantee system. So if people are not satisfied, uh, we give all the money back. And the people who just cannot come to my seminar because they're sick, we follow up and then make sure that they get the money back too. Mm-hmm. Not many people do that, so they appreciate us for doing that. So uh, you just so it's so you want to make sure that everything that's coming in has mm-hmm. has a very good, I guess, spirit to it. Yes, right? yes. anything that's so, coming in, it's not just about being appreciative of it, but it's also that the spirit of what is coming in is strong and good. Yes, yes. So the people who can come to our, our um, seminar. You know, I missed one concert because my daughter had a high fever and I felt so upset, uh, not with the money, but the fact that I couldn't go. So uh, we just reach out to, to those people who just didn't show up and uh, we ask them. And uh, usually they have something uh, urgent um, because and, and they missed it. So I said, OK, you missed it. So we'll give you the money back. They're super surprised. Like, what? You're giving what? us money back? You know, we're saying our staff says, say, because you didn't show up. So that means we didn't serve you the food. No no food, no money. So uh, uh, it's not right to charge charge you uh, for for the food that you didn't eat. You didn't eat. So um, so they become a very supporters of uh, our, our seminars and, and books that way. So only receive happy money. How is, and one more question before we wrap up today here, um, and your time is so generous. So thank you so much. And I'm so happy you're asking me so many great questions, Wes. Uh, what is the difference? So happy money difference between a, so somebody's in retirement. Let's call it seen. Let's call it someone who's even older in retirement. So mm-hmm. uh, senior citizens relative to children. I, I know we started off the conversation a little bit, but the, the, somebody in their twenties they want to buy stuff to peacock around, and when you're sixty, you want security. What what is just the general difference between a kid and money? And a seat in someone who is is well well into retirement. Yeah, so I think people are more worried about their health issues. You know how much it's going to cost, uh, health, and all that. So you feel like uh, um, you have to have some money for that. Like in north uh, north northern European countries, and like in Bhutan, you know you have you don't have to pay a lot of money for uh, dentistry and also a surgery. The other day I went to a dentist and. How much do you think they they charge me uh, for cleaning and everything? It charge they charge me only eight dollars. Yeah, that doesn't happen here. You can't even buy a Coca Cola uh, for eight dollars here. 
is this everything? And I said, $8? Yes, you know, $8.20 or something, right? And in North America, probably you have to pay $800, right? That's right. Even, yeah, if, well. you're, even if you have insurance. So I think medical bills could be uh, such a little tricky thing uh, for uh, people who retire in North America. So if, because if it's not covered right, you will probably worry about how much bills you have to pay. So if medical insurance are okay with you, I, 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 I want to introduce you the idea with, uh, of die with zero philosophy. You know, uh, you got to pick up a book, die with zero. I'm fascinated with, uh, with this book, uh, because, uh, can you think of, um, the day when you die, how much money do you want to leave? You know, I think the, the most beautiful person dies with no money. My, yeah. uh, my friend's mom, uh, calculated how much it's going to cost for her funeral and everything. And he gave away all the money he, uh, she had for, uh, her grandkids, which is not a lot, uh, because she was a school teacher. So she calculated everything and she gave away all the money. And uh, after paying all the funerals, uh, how much do you think uh, she she had left in the bank account? She had only like eight dollars uh, $8 and, and something, uh, less than ten dollars in her bank account when she died. I think it's the most beautiful way of passing, you know, die with zero, and 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 also happy memories. Yeah. But uh, only the master, true masters, can can do that because we are too afraid. Yeah, we're so afraid, and we, it's hard to it's hard to time it. It's a little hard. Yeah, to... yeah, and uh, so we are afraid of uh, spending all the money we have. But imagine if all your kids and other people will make sure that you're okay. I think you can die with zero. So think about uh, the money. Money is to be enjoyed. So um, you can celebrate your last, you know, remaining years with all the happy memories. So don't feel too afraid uh, because, you know, extreme cases that you cannot go on vacation because you're afraid of spending money. So spend money well. There's one thing that's so it's interesting. I think the cultures of the, the maybe the cultures, the culture where you are versus the European cultures versus North American culture where the. And I think of European culture and I actually think of maybe some of the Asian cultures where mm -hmm. it is very normal that where families do they the more extended families and they do take care of each other. It's not, that is not, you know, we have this great, such independence in the United States. I think mm -hmm. that is good in so many ways, but it also has made families very in, un dependent upon each other. And mm -hmm. they, 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 they fly to, they, they live in other States and they end up not necessarily supporting their, the kids don't necessarily support their adult parents. Uh, mm -hmm. That's very common in the United States, or at least I, I still see that a fair amount. So I do wonder if that is culturally different here in the United States, and we have less of that inner and generational support as you maybe do perhaps in Japan or in certain European countries. May I, I don't know if that's the case. Yes, yes. So and, and if you are um, having a difficulty financially, you can ask your parents, your kids, or your brothers and sisters for help. And uh, people are more willing to help you um, than you think. But we are so bad at receiving help or asking for help. So, um, you know, we are so good at uh, helping, but we are so bad at asking for, for help. So um, in the case of, you know, uh, financial hardships, we have to be vulnerable and also uh, learn how to ask for help. So... Um, and culturally, it's harder in, uh, in North America yeah. to ask for help. I understand that because uh, it's a cultural thing. So, um, uh, but if you can go beyond that, uh, a lot of people feel so loved by being asked for help. Yeah, that's true. So, that's you know, they might, they, their, uh, your bonding may be, be stronger if you ask for one. And then the worst case scenario is they say, no, I can't help you. But still, the love is there. So, um, you know, you, you have to be vulnerable and ask for help. How do people find you, Ken Honda? And, and what will they find? How do, how do people best find you? Thank you for asking. Um, you can find me at KenHonda.com. I started this uh, Arigato Living Community uh, for English speak, uh, speakers 
Uh, I have one of the uh, largest online salons in Japan, and uh, I studied the same. We have about a few hundred people、uh, from 20 different countries. Well, we meet、uh, once a month、uh, and learn about happy money. And I teach、uh, how to monetize your gifts and how to find one. So、um, if you're interested in learning those, just、uh, please come visit us at kenhonda.com. Well, we are going to have people visiting kenhonda.com from the Retire Sooner podcast. <laughs>、um, and I, I know、uh, it, it's very nice of you to do this. I know that I know you've been on some of the very biggest podcasts in the United States. I think just、uh-huh. recently, we're not the biggest podcast in the United States, but、um, maybe, maybe we'll get a little bit bigger when people share the news that you were here and、uh-huh. from what, they, what you were able to teach the audience here t- today. I think it's just so valuable. And I thank I really thank am、you. so appreciative of that. Thank you, Wes.、Uh, the honor is mine. I'm so happy、uh, that I、uh, connect with people.、Uh, so, this is my fun,、uh, fun kind of activities, you know, just get out, getting up early in the morning before、um, my schedule starts. I have this、uh, fun English lessons. And also, you know,、uh, this is such a great joy、uh, for me to be able to share、um, about happy money. So, please start. Uh, arigato your money, appreciate your money in your own unique way, and then see how, how you change your life. I hope you feel more peaceful with money and more peaceful with your life. So, thank you, Wes, for having me once again. I, I, I'm, I'm just sending all my love and appreciation and blessings to you all. Thank you. See you soon. <laughs>